So we're here at iHipHop.com, chilling with Rockles. How's everything going on with you? And I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed. You know, right now I'm in the process. Like, I record music every day, you know. Uh, the next album I'm gonna drop is called Seems Believe. You know, but shoot, man, in between time, like I don't have a, I don't have a set date on it yet. It's just tentative right now. So, in in, in the meantime, between time, man, I'll probably drop another mixtape. You know, I'm gonna cover mixtape. I'm gonna drop my wordplay two mixtape. You know, I got this other mixtape I just started working on called Lingo for Dummies. Cause everybody be like, man, you spell your music so crazy and your slang, and you always coming up with different words and stuff, so I was like, what the hell, you know, I'm doing a mixtape called Lingo for Diamonds, you know? I don't know, I think it was, speaking of still, you know, Gift of Gab, like that song you got with um, Rick and uh, Future, the You Don't Know, yeah. that joint's kind of crazy, by the way, but, you know, what I want to really talk to you about is, you know, when you have like a record like that with those type of people on, you know, most people in your position, they might sit on that record and wait to, you know, put it like on an official album, but not you, like, you just felt like you just wanted to give it out to the people instead of trying to really try to make a dollar off it. Oh, I'm making dollars off it. Anytime I put out music, I monetize all my music. My music is available for sale. We go on iTunes right now and buy that song right now. So, plus, you know, I know that back in the day when you first came out, you would sign a Def Jam, but you know what I'm saying, that didn't really work out for you. So, like, what happened? Did it just would it treat you as a priority or anything? Nah, what happened with Def Jam was, when I signed with Def Jam, uh, it was a situation where Jermaine Dupree had took on a position at Island Records. Yeah. So when he took on the position at Island, you know, he reached out to me and was like, Rocco, I want to bring you over to Island, whatever, whatever. So I was like, you know, let's make it make sense. You know you're going to have to put your best foot forward, you know what I'm saying? Because you know you're going to have to come with that check, and let's make it happen. But he was dragging his feet. So in the meantime, I just got the mentality, I can't wait on nobody. I'm not waiting on nobody, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep it pushing. So, you know, I, I bust my own piggy bank open on my own campaign. And I got it moving, you know, I got I got my song, uh, I'm gonna do me. I got it up, I charted it, I got it in the top 40 by myself. I guess Def Jam got word of it or whatever. So my guy Shakir Stewart called me. It was like, Rocco, fly up, you know. So he flew me up. And then I met with L.A. Reed. L.A. Reed made it happen, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, Shakir Stewart was the one that signed me. So it, it got to a point where Shakir and J.D., they were bumping heads because J.D. was like, nah, well, I was about to sign him. But Shaquille was like, you dragging your feet. Yeah. You know, you got Jimmy about, you know, so at the end of the day, I ended up signing with Shakir signing. And it was just conflict in the building, you know, so we worked it out while we went over to the island side. But JD kept trying to put so so deaf on my music. And, you know, JD ain't ain't spent no money on me. Shakir, he just didn't want to fall out with JD. You know what I'm saying? Because he had to work with him. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it was just, you know, I was in the middle of that shit. And I'm just going, I'm a stand-up guy, you know, I'm going to stand on what I stand for all the time. And I'm not going to compromise. I'm like, that's not going to work, J.D. Don't try me like that, you know. And um, But then me and J.D. was bumping heads, but then we ended up getting cool and working it out. But then um, after that, it was just, everything was in disarray. Shortly after that, J.D. left, left the label, and Shaquille was like, okay, man, let's make it happen. And we were moving forward. Then about a week later, he died. So after that, I felt like he was the only person who really understood me over there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I knew a few of the people over there, but I ain't really rock with him like I rock with him. So when all that went down, did, you know, that whole experience leave like a sour taste in your mouth when it came to the music business? No, because, you know what I'm saying, business is business. You know, you really can't take business personal, you know what I'm saying? Even though business get personal, because you're dealing with persons. And anytime you're dealing with persons, it's gonna be, for me, anytime you're doing business, when you're dealing with persons, it's going to be personal, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth. It just let me know I just had to come. I had to rewrite the, I had to rewrite the blueprint, you know, so that's what I did. I went in, I beat the streets up, you know, and I, I, rewrite, I rewrote the business model, you know what I'm saying? So now I got my own business model, you know what I mean? Where I can live residually off my music. You know, I can put out mixtapes and put them online and monetize my work and still make money. You know what I'm saying? It's like I put my music out. I make 100% of my music. You being a label head and an artist, so is it hard switching hats? It is. You know, it's a hard job. You know, I'm still trying to balance it out. You know, I got a lot to learn, you know what I'm saying? Long way to go, you know? Um, but it's a hard job in itself, you know, because it's like when you're doing something, you want to go into everything you do wholeheartedly. 
You don't want to be a situation where you halfway doing this and halfway doing that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no such thing as halfway, you know what I mean? You being from ATL, which always been like, you know what I'm saying, a hotbed for artists, but right now it just seems like, like obviously you got the joint with Future. You still got, you know, people like Two Chains and Walker doing their thing. You know, obviously you still got the big homies like T.I. Ludacris. So, like, with that being said, do you ever find yourself like fight for position amongst those people? Nah, because I run the town. Yeah, I run the town. Yeah, I didn't I didn't name myself the Dunn. You know what I'm saying? The streets name me the Dunn. Salute to everybody you said, you know what I'm saying? But all of them, you know, they you know, they respect me and what I stand for. You know, they reach out to me, you know. Is my people, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I don't have to fight for position because at the end of the day, my reputation precedes me. And everybody know what I stand for.